right? Uh, so long as we organize data in a way that's uh, uh, that offloads a lot of the video files or kind of storage to a content delivery network, uh, the architecture doesn't actually. It, it's not as important, but it, it it is good to think of a way to model the architecture that kind of uh, workable for the client as well as easy to evolve. In the case that um, uh, for cases like when traffic spikes, say for example, millions of users want to access a particular video, or for cases where uh, millions of users like the video and now they want it to be in their recommendation. So a lot of this offloading work can uh, allow us to model architecture that's uh, more cost effective and easy to evolve. And one of the architectures we found most appropriate for this is a service-based architecture. Now service-based architectures are um, scoped in a way similar to microservices, but unlike microservices that go <coughs> a bit more technical uh, in how they, say for example, go event-driven or go more in detail with the technical network aspects of microservices. Uh, service-based architecture only concerns with uh, creating services scoped in their own domain. So say, for example, for our video streaming platform service, uh, we could have a, an upload service, we can have a content search service, for example. And then these uh, compartmentalizations of services uh, rest with the requirements of more of a ease of, ease of use as well as uh, being able to evolve such an architecture. Say, for example, we can always convert our service-based architecture to microservices, but uh, considering that we also take into account technical features. So the architectural characteristics of a um, service-based architecture, uh, one of, there are a lot of characteristics, but more, the main important parts are the number of quanta, uh, most likely cost, and the scalability. So number of quanta means uh, number of deployments of the, the, not the service, but actually the uh, related persistence of the service. So say, for example, one for each service, it has its own database. So the number of quanta here represents each um, persistence for each service. But here, since we have uh, two databases here, we can view this as two quanta. And this is important because how we handle uh, failure scenarios or fault tolerance, tolerance scenarios are based on the number of quanta and how we how we organize it. But luckily, service-based architectures gives us a lot of flexibility in how we want to do this. We can have multiple persistences for each service, or we can uh, put all of these services into one database uh, to simplify development, for example. So uh, this is really good for our cost because since it's very flexible for us to, to organize services this way, um, we don't need to worry about how do we uh, provision certain, um, let's say, provision a database. Should we provision it in the cloud? Should we provision it for a service? Um, we can just take the simple route and provision it for provision one for every service. And then how we expand that later uh, can uh, depend on business or changing business requirements or maybe contingency scenarios where we, we might need some uh, more fault tolerance in persistence. And um, uh, the, the next characteristic is scalability. This is very good for scalability since we separate deployments by services. Now each service can have their own deployment or have multiple deployments of their own. So we, we can handle lots of user requests this way because we can proxy um, user requests into, let's say, a load balancer. And then this load balancer will know how to handle uh, where to offload um, requests. Let's say for let's say we have a multiple instances for a receiving service, and then these requests will um, basically load balance between these services. So scalability in this aspect is um, a bit more simpler. It's not as scalable as what you would think of uh, microservices because there is a, an inherent um, delay or an inherent um, network delay when you when you scale up. Uh, with multiple services, especially when services need to either interact with each other, RPC style, or interact with the database through through a database connection. So there, there is um, uh, a network bottleneck there. And uh, how this is partitioned is based on domain, uh, similar how to how service-based architecture was introduced. 
uh, each service can be specified in its own basis domain. So what a basis domain refers is basically just an area of, uh, of a mathematical area of concerns for the business for regarding their use cases and requirements. And uh, this partitioning style is quite important for our startup because um, going a bit too technical, uh, we lose a lot of maybe time in development or if we want to go into technical areas, which is why microservices architecture doesn't seem to be a good fit, which makes a uh, service-based architecture uh, a bit more comfortable since we can uh, organize by those concerns. And then we can divide teams by each of those domains. So we can say we can have a team for each service and then they can handle their model of the service in their domain. Uh, so for this presentation, where we introduce a lot of uh, design concepts. So one of the design um, model designs that we use is uh, the C4 model. So the C4 model is just a way to organize um, how users interact with the system and then what the details of that system is. So. Um, for this presentation, we have context, which represents our stakeholders and uh, relevant systems and external systems. We have containers, which go into detail about um, what the system has, maybe a database, maybe uh, certain web application services, maybe uh, uh, persistent services. And the uh, component level diagrams are more into detail of what those services contain. So say, for example, um, uh, we could log in to have a, a reset password controller, or we could uh, do um, basic facades for, for those controllers against the database. So we go as far as to the components. We do, there is some mention about um, code level diagrams, but for the purposes of this presentation, we have, we replace code level diagrams for developer-based diagrams. Um, yeah. So the context diagram for the video streaming platform uh, concerns with uh, three main stakeholders. So one is uploaders, the so people who curate and, get, and uh, produce video content to upload to the video streaming system, uh, viewers who can view and search that content, and advertisers who have the same role as uploaders, but they can also upload uh, banners or view specific analytics data uh, concerning their advertisement. And we also have two external services, one for email system, because uh, anything concerning accounts will also have to interact with the email system, as well as the content delivery network. Since we, uh, our main goal is to offload as much as the, much of the kind of heavy work to other services to handle, let's say, video storage. So that's, that's where the content delivery network uh, sits in. For the container diagram, this diagram is a bit um, hard to deal, but in uh, basically, it's uh, a web application which interfaces with multiple services. So it interfaces with the analytics and upload service. And most of the other services are, such as the account service, the transcoding service, or more supplementary to the uh, critical business requirements for the system. Um, and then we also have services that offload those to external systems. So the content delivery services uh, off offloads that to the content delivery network uh, system. Uh, similar to the email service that offloads to the email system. So say, for example, we have like a queue that pushes an email to uh, Google Mail, for example. That's that's what the role of these services are. As well as a, a database, because we want to store our data. And the general outline of this um, uh, container level diagram is basically these services interacting with the email system, database, and content delivery network. So in total, we have about seven services. And one of the more important services are the upload and content services. So for the upload service, um, we need a way to pass that to a service that can transcode video, such as transform it into multiple formats, and then deliver it to a content delivery network. So uh, going deeper into these um, services, so for the account service, um, it's it's pretty simple. The idea is that we are allowed to sign in as well as to reset our passwords. And then how they how signing in and resetting our passwords interact with the database and the email service are as follows. Um, you can see that the the four main areas of the email service is mainly the reset password controller. The reset password 
has to involve email in some form. And this also offers the email service. And for more detailed diagrams, let's say, for example, uh, we have use cases where we want to send emails for notifications, for example. And then there would be a separate service that would handle a similar component that would offload to the email service. For the content service, so the content service is a bit, it's, there's a lot of ways to diagram this. But one simple way to diagram this is to offload it to an aggregates component, which is simply a way that uh, a component that handles most of the queries in one area, so we can search our content in the aggregates component, or search our user history, video history through the component, or find recommendations um, from the component that is that has aggregated our history. And then this aggregates component, as it searches um, data from the database, the database uh, internally references the videos that we've transcoded before uh, from the content delivery network. So this is the, the the relationship of how the aggregates component references from the content delivery network. Uh, for the analytics service, this is more for our um, advertisers. Uh, go into detail about uh, aggregating and summarizing analytics for our uh, advertisers because they have the opportunity to upload banner ads as well as to upload video. Uh, so the main um, uploading component that uploads video is here. So the ads, let's say um, an advertiser wants to upload a video, we upload and queue that to the upload service. And maybe we can have, uh, there may be certain behaviors that the ads upload component may have. Uh, say for example, uh, it might need to um, single events or like a Map, map events from the uploading uh, patterns from advertisers, and then we can save that to the database. This is one, this is a possible relationship. And as for the upload service, um, the upload service is basically a file transfer from the user to another service. So uh, this service uh, mains, it, its main focus is to validate videos as well as to pass them to the transcoding service. Um, similar to how the analytics service uploads, uh, passes that to the upload service, to the upload component in particular. Um, uploaders who curate uh, video content uh, to upload to the website also interact with the upload service in this way. And the upload service moves it to the transcoder service. Now the transcoder service, um, by design, is fairly simple. We're just passing um, data to transform into another set of data. But the details for how to transcode video vary from a uh, company. So say, for example, if you were to do an in-house transcoding service, we would have to consider what formats are the most appropriate for our platform. And the, the common practices are uh, with the following video and audit, audio codecs, um, a way to transcode videos in formats that are kind of uh, appropriate for the bandwidth, uh, the, the bandwidth um, patterns of our users, yeah, the bandwidth patterns of our users. Um, yeah, so. Um, apart from the, the component level diagrams, uh, we also have domain centric diagrams for developers. Now, this is just an overview of what the um, domain centric diagrams entail. Um, we mostly go into for the, for the purposes of this presentation, we go into detail for BPMN diagrams, which are basically state machine diagrams that uh, list events and what events uh, transpose into uh, what kind of logic in our system. So for, so for our first um, detailed diagram, we, we talk about on video upload, which is simply a request, uh, receive or reject kind of flow for, for submitting videos which is just a state machine that uh, checks whether we've submitted a, a video upload, whether we've verified it, uh, and whether whether the server has received it, RPC stuff. And then this is how, between the uploader, uh, through the web application, how they interact with the upload service. So the upload service simply um, queues the video for upload, and then uh, passes it to the transcoding service to decode and transcode which sends it off to the content delivery service to send it to the content delivery network. Now the role of the content delivery service here is also to, is also to log events from the service whenever we upload to the content delivery network and uh, return a successful response. And then that gets saved to the database where 
we push notify the user that the video is uploaded and then that the data for the video has been uh, maybe for 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 uh, if we have a more sophisticated database it's queued for indexing we can queue uh, certain uh, data designs for for uploading video uh, to to in, to be indexed uh, lazily to the to the database uh, for content search is very similar to video upload but uh, for the perspective of the user instead of the uploader so um, it's it's a simple check re um, re request response kind of style of state machine. Uh, one particular nuance to the content search is that um, the res the returning response to the multi the multiple transferring of services is pretty important here. So it's very hard to avoid an RPC style uh, for for sending um, uh, passing data from the user to the the content uh, services. So we have a content service, so through the web application, we send the search keywords for the content service to uh, call the aggregates component to prepare and then uh, uh, to, to query through the database. And then once we uh, successfully get a response from the database, we pass down those results from the content service and then back, back down to the web application. Now, this is a more a naive version of how we communicate the web ap application to the content service, but ideally, there there may be a, a load balancer in between or a proxy service in between. Uh, normally, the, the connection, the communication between these servers is a bit more um, longer in terms of uh, network. If we're, if we're talking about um, across networks, so this is um, it's hard to avoid a, an RPC style to to kind of get our content uh, searched. Um, this is one one area of concern that we uh, also have to consider when when doing a follow up to the client. Uh -uh. Um, and that kind of ends um, basically the general outline of the deliverable. It's more of a uh, simple outlook of what we wanted to design for our clients. Um, and normally, when we have clients that maybe go into more technical detail, we will tailor. Those presentations to go more in technical detail, but for for this presentation, it's, it's as simple as it goes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Ah, you can uh, ask questions in Vietnamese, I'll translate them into English and I'll answer them in English. Ah. Which service would be different between a live streaming platform? Um, live streaming platform is more with um, real-time transcoding a video. So it's not as different mm, in the sense that the the communication layer between the web application and then the, the services in between the transcoding services has to be in real time. So technically this has to be uh, scoped in, let's say, uh, let's say we, we choose a protocol that, that can scope our packets. HTTP, um, SSE can do this. The problem with um, kind of using existing protocols is that we have to be very careful on how um, we pass information to the client. So this is more focused on the client uh, video player. So if the client video player can't consume the data as fast enough through the live streaming platform, it begins to um, buffer in a way that's kind of hard to save from the client. It, it buffers in that corrupt in a way that corrupts the uh, file format so it's a bit different in that way but uh, ideally it's technically the same concept but more real time uh, 
Are there any open source solutions for this? Uh, I kind of. Because um, a lot of the open, well, I'm not sure. Um, there was one open source solution, which was more of a practice in uh, creating the in, in creating a video streaming platform. But ultimately, it just offloads video to a uh, content delivery network, as well as offload the service to transcode video to another service. So, one possible concern that we we noted are that uh, transcoder service can be in-house, but uh, can also belong to an external system because uh, transcoding is very CPU and GPU intensive, mostly CPU because we're transcoding audio in um, uh, almost real time. If for live streaming, this would be very intensive. Uh, and if, if we find open source solutions for this, it wouldn't be as useful since Ultimately, the architecture is a bit secondary to these services, as the main driving points for these services are the transcoder service and then the content delivery service. Um, any special design for content search service to increase search speed? Um, if we go into more technical aspects for content search, um, it would go more deeply into vector-based text um, indexing. So mm, there's, a, there's a few ways you can do this. If you want to do this in Postgres, for example, there's a gin index where you can um, uh, set a bunch of um, array vectors for, for text. And then the, the gin index will, will index to um, certain uh, points of those words. But it's not as, it's a bit hard to explain, but those, how it indexes those words is not as um, efficient. If you want to do it um, your own, uh, you would have to first um, group words by lexical concern. Let's say, for example, I wanted to search for uh, video games, then VID would be a, a kind of like a lexical concern for an index or um, something between three, three characters and up. Uh, and then how we index that either through a a skip list or a uh, black tree. How we index that is up to us, but doing that in house is a bit um, a bit hardcore. So it's best to offload this to a different aggregator. To say, for example, um, if we can have Algolia to index our our search words, for example, and then those search words are just graphs to um, videos oh, in the yeah. database. That would be the most ideal for. Us. Uh, content search service. Any other questions? One of the main issues of video streaming is scalability. In essence, how to handle growing number of users it might sound early for a startup, but do you have any strategies or practices in video streaming perspective specifically? Um, so the idea for this architecture, uh, a service-based architecture, is that we can do uh, something called service decomposition. So with service decomposition, we can transform it into microservices if we want, if we want to uh, kind of scale internally, because these Microservices and services in general uh, are internal interacting um, networks, in essence. Um, to s we can always scale the, the web application, the load balancer, the proxies. But to scale those services, we have to uh, first minimize the amount of um, kind of 
uh, okay. uh, overhead for those services. So um, in the beginning, you, you can deploy multiple instances of those services and then create a more solid network connection between uh, interacting services, say, for example, upload service and the transcoder service. Or, for instance, um, the content uh, delivery service with the transcoder service. Uh, since the bandwidth to send videos to the through each service is um, uh, grows exponentially for each for each user, so how we handle that is more of a kind of like a class of optimization on its own. But uh, generally, knowing how to um, one decompose services to um, kind of their their more appropriate um, areas of kind of in a way that we can handle. Technically, uh, no, no, in a way that we can handle them um, and optimize them, but the bit hard to explain. Um, hmm. Well, um, at the end of the day, uh, we just need to make sure that when uh, these services don't DDoS themselves or DOS themselves, in essence, so we can always. Um, we can always account for user kind of um, expandability through through the front end services as well as the, the because they're they're the kind of front lines of the entire architecture. But to avoid like internal dosing, we have to probably think of ways how to uh, minimize bandwidth transfers, which kind of implies. Um, a way to house videos temporarily. So basically, a a persistence that buffers videos. For instance, I believe YouTube does this um, for uh, recently uploaded videos, where they they buffer very low quality videos, and then they serve that to the user first, and then they, as the transcoder service uh, finishes the other videos, and then uploads it to their content delivery network. Uh, then then it it gets rolled out uh, in a I guess. Oh yeah, yeah. It gets it gets rolled out in kind of like a natural way. Yeah. Not sure if I answered that question. Oh, okay, okay. Any more questions? Easily, can we transform the architecture to microservices? Um, it depends on uh, how we divide our concerns, but there is a specific um, mathematics to uh, decomposing services. So this is uh, more of a specific area for for domain-driven design, which is called service decomposition. And service decomposition is a a pattern to Kind of divide services into smaller areas of kind of domain concerns, not just domain concerns but technical concerns. Um, say, for example, the transcoding service can transcode into transcode into multiple formats, right? So each of these multiple formats could be a service on its own. So we can parallelize um, the transcoding of multiple formats. At the moment. Uh, we kind of design it in a way that this transcoding service handles all of the work, which is in a, in a sense for a startup, it's not that bad, but uh, it gets worse with uh, more users you have. So one way to kind of divide this into microservices is to divide it by by format. This is one way. For the um, let's say the analytics service in particular, since we divide by controllers and components, we basically have um, Areas of services, so one for summary, and then one for upload, which is essentially dividing uh, concerns by controller and component, which is also another way to decompose services this way to microservices. Um, ideally, when you uh, divide it into microservices, 
it tends to trend towards um, uh, that these services have their own database to avoid uh, database thrashing and um, network partitions between databases, uh, between the database and the, and the multitude of services, which is why you um, regularly see microservices having their kind of own Postgres or their own SQL-like database. Any more questions? <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Uh, if I went too quickly, just uh, let me know. I can uh, go back to the slide and then uh, ask, you can ask questions there. Okay, does anyone have any more questions? Ah, so one area in the architectural characteristics uh, for overall cost. Ah, I forgot to mention that. The more stars we have, the more cheaper it gets. This is what the meaning of overall cost. Um, cost effectiveness here um, also goes into the, the main concern is development cost because um, how we organize teams to create um, separate services or how we organize um, separation of concerns for, a, for an architecture uh, becomes the biggest cost because it's um, not handling those correctly becomes more of a refactoring kind of job and we want to avoid like refactors for a startup. Uh, yeah, that's one concern. The other concern for deployment, deployment is not as expensive because uh, we can either deploy this in-house or we can deploy this on a kind of like um, on a platform as a service or we can, we can deploy it in, in many forms. It's not as expensive because um, our expenses is mostly proportional to the amount of users interacting with the website because we want because the, the goal of the service-based architecture is to have a format that's also easy to evolve but also kind of flexible to scale with users so how we increase deployments or how we decompose services or for instance how we um, um, kind of create more load balancers for example to to, to handle bursts of user requests um, becomes more of a, a cost concern there. But the cost, um, it isn't as much until we have a lot of users. And uh, for a startup, our concern for a lot of users uh, is a bit too early. So, so normally we would just be expecting thousands or tens of thousands of users. Um, although um, such an architecture is a bit bad in elasticity, we are flexible, but we can't handle bursts of requests as easily, even though we can uh, create more instances of services, because our main um, bottleneck for elasticity is the number of quanta, which basically concerns back to the number of databases we have. So the less databases we have, uh, the more we have database thrashing between 
services because they could lock a table or they could uh, interact with a connection that's uh, closing out within a, in a connection pool or a database. Lots of concerns just with uh, one database, which is why when um, companies scale to microservices is uh, why there are separate databases for each service. One is to avoid that bottleneck. Uh, two is to um, separate persistence in its own domain. Any more questions? I, I hear like someone's talking. Looks heavy, the service or the, the, the table. I mean, it's a lot of size. You can imagine it being heavy. Uh, sure, sure. We can do. Um, hmm. What topic do you want to do on on the next step presentation? This could work uh, until we get into the front end. Everything from the back end and the infrastructure is pretty simple for, for this, except until we get into the front end. <laughs> um, I don't think Traveloka is as easy though. <laughs> Especially how they but they have their own kind of they post about I'm not sure. Hmm. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure their architecture isn't as simple. But at least the concepts for their service is pretty simple. Um, so we're just buying tickets. Yeah. So, interesting on travel. Did I say anything? Um, looks the same as last one. <laughs> oh, R F. Uh -huh. Ah, uh, this looks much more better.
Yeah, data aggregation in an event-based system. Not as simple though. <laughs> If um, we want an architecture that's close to what we're doing now in the company, uh, closer to blockchain, it's very similar to event-driven architecture. If we just use blockchain as an event store, and then we, our services in the back end are just indexers, or we can uh, offload the indexer to a, a separate service. But the idea is basically waiting for an event on the blockchain and then doing something on that event. Hey, yeah, right. So, uh, so everyone, so uh, there, there are a few architecture that, that actually like the, the button uh, that I want us at the team, uh, we, we, we should learn together. It's well that is the data aggregation because, like, um, more system we will do uh, from now to, 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 to the rest of our career is data aggregation. Uh, as you know, like, for more moths and even our indexing system. Yeah. Uh, more of that, they, they will apply the data aggregation. And I think that when I start the software modeling, I want our team member, uh, you spend some time, you look at the, the state of the art of how all the company, um, how they do that, and how they uh, Build the application. Usually, like when we add a junior, we we want to do something like that. We just like uh, build a roller, and then we put the data to a database. Then we render all of them into view the controller, and then to the web view something like that. But uh, if you want to to make it scalable, um, it, you should take it in a different approach. So like uh, this is one of the, the topic I want the team, especially like the group. Uh, we should we should learn that uh, and come up with something like uh, the standard of uh, transportation when we when we uh, do the con con consultation for uh, on the client or on the company. Uh, so so I, I would suggest that on the next presentation you you should do something like that. Uh, Tom or or Hugh. Right now Hugh is the engineer of of Momos. Maybe he can do something for that. He can show you like something on more mods and then you guys can can do some kind of comparison. Oh, maybe here. I remember here taking. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't. Uh, now for even for one of the project, the blockchain project that uh, no, it's not blockchain project. One of the trading platform that we are working on. Uh, okay. The Nguyen trading. Uh, I mentioned that uh, several times. Uh, the 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 back end of that system we also the the data aggregator and even for the weak node that I, s I send the link in the channel uh is it also the data okay. yeah. yeah right 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 so i think that is the topic that uh, we should we should hear from our engineer and discuss about that this is one of the topic Yep, um, sure. yeah, another one is the how you would build a, a system with blockchain in integration. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it would be a second topic, a, a second topic for software architecture, right? Yep, yep, yep. Uh, any plan for that? Uh, hmm. Currently, we're still doing a bit of our kind of um, architectural exercises, but luckily, uh, Hugh is doing event-driven architecture, so uh, we can probably from that we can we can extend uh, through another presentation and explore uh, put that apply that into blockchain as well. Uh, and yeah, li like on your diagram in uh, let me see. Uh, slide number 10 yeah right so right now you you cut kind up of like you merge on of the different services into one uh, but for right for, for our approach I, I would like you to to indicate that uh, like you draw the, the the Venn diagram or some kind of like 
you divide them into uh, different domain so like for now i, I see that uh, a few services right now they take care of the 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 the, 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 the cdn right yeah that's correct uh and, and a different one is for the application like account service email service and uh another one for for for, for monitoring something like that uh, so so for so for software modeling and software architecture i i, I would love you as a, a um at the person who, who do the presentation you should like indicate that the how what is your approach to 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 to, to address what is the different uh, domain that the, the engineer uh, approach right uh, yeah, yeah. yeah um, is that so for yeah. this diagram in particular has a has a set of law because it groups by system but normally in a business we uh, group by domains and then these services group by subdomains and then they're they're following kind of items in their subdomain yeah now, but more, okay. if, you, if you show something like that to the whole audience i i believe that they they don't know the whole thing so it's different for them as uh, uh, if they want to study it, they, they will see it at a whole, right? And they can different from uh, one system to another system. So like, ah. in every system you will get, uh, you will also have um, account service, email service, and everything. Uh, it's just the different thing, the different, the commodore is the, for, for, if, for current presentation, it is for the, the CDN, but for, uh something like traveloka is a different model right yep, yep, yep. Uh, so you should pull it out for them yep, yep. Yep, yep. right okay and so i would love to, to 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 see that um you can check back some of the example uh we used to do that for i have room that i remember and i'm not sure if if uh, if the team remember that uh, <laughs> but you can check with uh he will uh, he, he on that he, he's the one that draw everything for our room and uh, uh when you do the presentation i would love you to point out for this kind of problem right this kind of topic uh, we approach we indicate we use the core model uh we build a service around that and this is the command service the embrace service it is like i mean like uh, uh the difference is in the presentation for the tech team should be like um the approach for the engineer how they can they can do it themselves okay 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 uh, i'm not sure if he will he will he will he will còn giữ cái đó he will nhất ơi Hi vọng nhất gì đây? Có nhiều lắc quần mà Alo. Um I, I think you should join them uh, as the beginning the group the the, the story group is just focus on uh, software modeling but right now they they move on uh, software ar architecture because like uh, we think that it is better for us as the engineer if we know the whole system and we can explain it uh, very clear to the client especially for uh, the client with zero technical knowledge they would be ah. very appreciate uh, on that right so uh, here you should join them and you show them some kind of you know, what you did for Aaron uh can you hear yeah yeah no ma yeah yeah what the and and it's something like that uh it's something like that because it's better for the engineer uh for now uh, for your 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 car diagram they i think it's easier for the for people to to look for the the block of or the company but that they don't have the explanation on how they come up with the idea, how they they put the system into services. Ah, um, so for this presentation in particular, it's more of a basic kind of the bare bones idea of a deliverable. So most of the composition of the deliverable is also okay. given to the clients. Let's say for example, 
Hmm. Yeah. So normally we would have um, question trees, and then um, through these question trees, we would have uh, an organization of documents to okay. follow up to follow up on the presentation as well. I see. Uh, this is a bit of a basic example, but normally in consulting, they have they they call it a content tree, and then mm -hmm. through this content tree, they they have um, different sections similar to how they they group by either domain ideas or by design decisions. Okay. And then through those design decisions, they incorporate a bit of the idea into the presentation, as well as mention back on the document. Because normally, uh. If it, if it wasn't for COVID, uh, uh, the, the, those documents will also be on the same table with the mm -hmm. client, including mm -hmm. the presentation. So this might be actually set prior to the presentation, and then the presentation would be the, the initial proposal to the follow-up to the document. Okay, get it, but it's, it's look a lot to me. Oh, this is just a lot, but normally... Um, <laughs> Uh, what's it? Those documents are more organized into um, informal. See if I if I have a so so more formal uh, kind of pieces of work. Not as formal as this. It doesn't have to be, but something a bit more uh, consumable for the client. No, I believe that's for the startup. They they don't want to do that. Yeah, they, they don't want to do that. But something a bit less than this. Less than this, but a bit more than this. Yeah, somewhere in between. Mm. Alright, I think that all for me. It's just like my comment on that. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Hey, team. Hey, team. Team, I can hug you now. Question time is longer than first question. <laughs> hey, so it's, it's better for you if you if you uh, if you done your if you done your part with coding. Uh, this is my recommendation for you to join the team on this uh, because I mean I join this uh, study because it is uh, one of the the, the the approach for you to to start up your game in software development. Uh, you should see the system in in different point of view. Um, so later on, when uh, it, it, it's helped you a lot to, to 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 climb up to the senior level, and also it will open up a a road for you to become a software architecture, and more than that, become a CTO or something. Um, so the team. So Tom and Tan and some people I, I don't remember the name. Uh, they say that they want to 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 start it, but when they join the group, like no one say nothing. Uh, right? Is it correct, Lam? Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> not sure. Not sure what happened there. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. So, so my recommendation, if you uh, if you finish your coding, you learn. Uh, enough of the technology you should join us on that um, and we need more people with this kind of uh, knowledge right because there are lots more of the projects coming up um, and right now we we say no we say no to them because like, we don't have the resources to take take care of the whole project I see. Uh, so we'd love to have more people to work directly with me and Nikki and the senior team. Okay? Yep, yep. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, any question? <laughs> any question? For the topic? Nope, nope. Uh. All right, Tanoi, uh, what's next, Tan?
lấy chuyện em tôi xanh là gì thanh à thì như là ví cổ web r t web atc hả ừ. atc à <cười> cái kinh tiết Next presentation là gì ta ơi? Hmm. Maybe, maybe ask uh, Hill to, uh, to, to do event driven architecture as well as uh, take some references from the previous scene that did Aharu. Okay. Uh, also, uh, also wanted to thank the, the previous founding members. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I still have two in here, but uh, yeah, yeah. There were most of um, most of the ideas or the basic ideas for the presentation that came from them as well as our our key supervisors and uh, researchers okay so don't forget that all right Rồi sắp đánh rồi, anh em em cho phát uh, quà thức tế để phát đi anh em Ở tờ tay thì anh em nào muốn được nhìn con thì dòi gốc thôi Enjoy and help me Uh, uh, probably close the presentation here and um, probably some closing thoughts. Uh, if anyone is currently in their study group and uh, wants some insight or some kind of novel ideas, you can probably ask uh, Peng Peng or uh, anyone in uh, related to the other groups uh, to help out as well. Uh, I found that um, asking other people for a bit of insight always, always helps in the long run, especially uh, Uh, from anh hơn yeah. ah, and if anyone wants our previous kind of um, example works from our our um, study group we have a folder that we kind of throw everything into or so just paste that in the group ideas are experimental and uh but at least um some of the the founding concepts for the uh, at least the basic layout of the of our deliverable presentation came from there okay, I share all right thank you so okay bye 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 Okay. 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 Okay.